In this section, we are going to talk about the HTTP protocol. If you're familiar with this topic, feel free to skip this chapter. If you want to learn everything from scratch, I recommend you to go through this chapter. As I mentioned before, the interaction between the client and the server starts with a HTTP request and ends with a HTTP response. And the HTTP request will actually go through the entire pipeline. And each one of the middleware component is actually responsible to create or add information to the response. So for the entire pipeline, the entire process, we are dealing with the HTTP protocol. That's why we dedicate an entire section for understanding the HTTP protocol. If you are familiar with it, you can skip this. But if you do want to understand everything from scratch, I recommend you to spend some time in this section. Okay, the first lesson in this section is going to be related to the HTTP request. The HTTP request is used by the client to provide requirements the server. So that's the purpose of HTTP. Throughout this chapter, I recommend you to keep this purpose in mind. For the HTTP request, it's responsible to provide information and that information is used as requirements from the browser to the server in order to ask for some information. The browser, which is the client, contacts the web server, which is the server, for specific purpose. And that requirement is provided within this HTTP request. And it needs to clearly state what information is needed in what format. Now let's talk about the protocol. The HTTP request, you can consider it as a string that is passed from the client to the server. And let's talk about the syntax here. On the first line, it needs to provide the method. And then there's a space followed by the URL and another space followed by the version of the protocol, a version of the HTTP protocol that's the first line that first line finishes right here and this first line is called the request line the method represents the action that the client wants to take on the server the url represents the location where the action should take place so those are two parts of the important information here and then it changed to the second line the second line is actually optional it could be zero or many HTTP headers. A HTTP header is a key value pair that's separated by colon. So for example, accept colon text HTML. So I'm basically saying to the server that I prefer the response in HTML format. I can provide other headers or I can just have one header. In fact, I can have zero header. Right? So let's say that I provide another header and I want the natural language to be in English. Let's say this is actually accept language and then I'm gonna say EN US. Okay, so I accept the natural language to be in English. So after I provide headers, you can actually add more headers here but if you don't have any more headers, then you need to have a empty line here. And then after that, this is the body part. The body part is the information that is going to be transferred to the server side. Again, we provide the server with some data, some information to process. So this is the basic format. Right? So you can have a lot of stuff in the body part. Again, we have the three different parts in this HTTP request. The first line, which is the request line. And starting from the second line until the empty space are the HTTP headers. And the line after the empty space, empty line, is the body. So all of these should be considered as a requirement sent to the server. And then the server will take a look at the requirements and return proper response. So that's the purpose and the syntax of HTTP request. So let's have an example. 
for a normal request sent through the browser, it's usually a GET request. And then this URL here is a relative URL, right? So it's based on a certain uh, domain. And that domain is actually provided in the header. So a certain URL, for example, if just slash, this indicates that I'm trying to get some resource from the root. And then the version by default, the version here is HTTP 1.1. And now it comes to the HTTP headers, which is a key value pair. And I'm telling the server to give me HTML content. And I'm telling the server that I accept English language. And the body in usually in get request is and we don't provide any body to the server for get request because it's not necessary. Body is usually used for the post or patch or put request. And we're going to talk about that later. Right now, let's just focus on simple get request. Okay. So this format of string follows the syntax right here. Okay? We have the method here, which indicates the action that the server needs to take means that the client is trying to get some information or you can see the client is trying to retrieve some information from the server and from which location from the root and what is the version of the protocol and then it provides more requirements right the client provides more requirements i prefer html and i prefer english language and for get request again there's no body body is empty all right, let's take a real world example. This is the application that we created last time. This basically comes up, comes out from the Visual Studio template. And if we run this web application, we're going to see this in the browser. Now, if I press F12, this is going to show up. This is called the developer tool. Press F12 to go to the developer tool, or you can go over here and then go to more tools and then go to developer tools, okay? Now, when you see the developer tool, click on the network tab, and you can see this red button here. It says stop recording network log, right? So what this means is that currently, the developer tool is trying to capture all of the network traffic. Although there's nothing here, it's because we have just started this developer tool. So this, that page is rendered already therefore it couldn't you couldn't see anything but in order to see some results in the network uh, tab here you just need to keep this running right don't click on this button to stop it so keep the recording going and then refresh this page now we can see something here so it's, it says local host this means that the network tab recorded one request sent to the server and we're going to talk about the status the document the initiator later but right now you can see that this is one request and if we click on this then we see more information right here usually in your developer tool by default you're going to see this as well but we may talk about this later in order to provide you with bigger screen i choose to hide it Okay, and then I'm gonna enlarge font a little bit so that you can see clearly. This screen, if this is the first time you see it, it could be a little bit confusing here. You can see headers, and then you can see response, and then under headers, you can see response headers and request headers, right? We're gonna talk about HTTP response later, so therefore just collapse it, right? Just collapse this one so that you don't see the response headers. And then scroll down to request headers here. Then you see this raw here, this raw here, and just click on this raw here. And now you see the actual raw HTTP request. And this follows the HTTP request syntax, right? You see the method here, and you see the path right here, which is the URL, and then the, the default HTTP version, and then a whole bunch of headers. You can tell this is a header because it is a key and value pair. This actually goes to here. And then another key separated by colon and value. Key, value. Now, some of the most commonly used headers, first of all, 
is the host because this is the relative pass. So this host provides the actually the, the domain plus the port, right? If the port doesn't exist, it doesn't mean there's no port. Web application by default runs on port 80. So if you want to run it on a spe special port, you need to specify that in your application. And we're going to talk about this uh, port specification later. Right now, this is this web application is configured to run on 5276 and the domain name is localhost. So the whole thing is the host. This indicates the address of the web application. And then this path, which is the URL, indicates a relative URL that is relative to the host. And then you can see what is the encoding that is required by the browser, what is the language required by the browser, and what is the cache control required by the browser, and what is the browser. Right? The browser says, I am Mozilla 5.0. So all of this information can be used by the server to make decisions to come up with the right response. Let's say you just want to come up with a response randomly without looking at what language the browser prefers, and then you come up with German. Then the client, which is the users, will not be able to understand it. Right? So it's important to take a look at the requirements from the HTTP request and then make correct decisions about what you should put in the response. Okay, that's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.